Hello and welcome to your trouble Micah's world. We don't deal here with the trouble Micah's in the world. We're dealing here with the trouble Micah's in the church. My name is Vass and uh, I represent the Lord Jesus Christ and his truth. The Lord Jesus Christ gave us the truth, the Holy Bible. And uh, the Lord said, go and preach it. And uh, that's what I'm doing. I speak on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ, so I don't blind me and don't hold any grudges on me because I only decide what God says. Amen. Today uh, we'll be dealing with uh, one of the following troublemaker. He's an orthodox. So I, um, I was brought up in a Catholic family. I had a lot of uh, orthodox friends. When I was going to Catholic church in my teenage years, so I, I know a bit, a bit about them. That's why I can speak, because I've got experience with them. I've got experience with Catholic troublemakers, Orthodox, they both the same. There's not much difference. They both worship crosses, worship the idols, worship the icons, and all the rest of it. Nonsense, which follows them. Okay, before I speak, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today, Lord. Thank you that you're giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf of you, to speak your truth, Lord. You, you the why, the truth and the life, Lord. Please give me your why, please give me your truth, please give me your life, Lord. All I'm praying and asking in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Okay, shall we begin? Fearing the Lord means loving the Lord. By the way, this is uh, Orthodox Pope. He speaks here how to be hundred percent sight. <laughs> Can you believe this? Orthodox point talks about hundred percent. I thought Catholics and Orthodox they're not going to heaven. I thought they believe in some place when they die they go and they get washed. I don't know if he's going to wash them devils there or God for a time, for a little time, like they're going to go to hell, hide it, so I don't know what they call it. So they, they're going to be there for, for a short time, some, some short, some longer, depends what sins you committed in, in this life. And then after that washing machine, which they're gonna go through, then maybe, or oh, I don't know, already they believe, maybe, or, or they will go to heaven. But this uh, Orthodox troublemaker, says 
Well, troublemakers then, Galatians. Let's open it. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So uh, this orthodox troublemaker with whom we're going to deal today, he preaches another gospel. And uh, I'll will prove that to all of you, so you'll have no doubts at, at the end of our session. Verse 7, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you. So this orthodox pipe is a trouble and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So this orthodox poet, troublemaker, he's a Bible poet. And he quotes verses not even from the Bible or from some dead book which he represents as a Bible. Verse 8, but toy we, we, this apostle Paul talks about him and all other apostles. Galatians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, he raised him from the dead. So Apostle Paul speaks on, on his behalf and on behalf of all other apostles and all other people who preach the truth. And that's, that's what we're supposed to do. Once you open this holy book, your job is to preach the truth, nothing else. Don't worry about your perverted denomination, Catholics, Orthodox, Charismatics, Baptists, and all other trash. Don't worry about them. These troublemakers, they represent the churches. They represent the denominations. They don't represent the true gospel of Christ, so that's why they're Bible perverts. Verse 9. Well, verse 8. But though we, or an angel from heaven, angel from heaven, that's the God's angels, they're not allowed to open their mouth and preaching something else, which is another gospel. From heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Past sentence. We have preached in the past. So that's already more than three quarter of the Bible is preached. And uh, more then three quarters of the Bible is written, so they already know the truth. So after you know it, you're warned, warned by God that you can't open your filthy mouth preaching any other gospel, but only the gospel of the truth, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed 
So every troublemaker, every denominational pastors, pipes, whoever they are, whoever they call in themselves, bishops, they are cursed by God, not by me. I'm only the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm only telling you what God says and point the finger at these troublemakers so you, so you know when you see them. So they're cursed by God. Verse 10 For do now pursue for do I now pursue man or God? All these troublemakers, they're all pursuing man. They're pursuing the false, perverted denomination, Catholic, Orthodox, Charismatic, Pentecostal, Baptist, Independent Baptist, all these uh, false religions. They're pursuing man. They're looking at each other. And their false beliefs began from the institutions where they joined colleges, Bible colleges or schools, whatever. And then the man which taught them, they're following that man and they're following those perverted devil's Bibles and they're preaching from them and they lie about God. So these denominations, they're, they're troublemakers from any of them. All of them. Oh God, or do I seek to please man? For if I yet please man, I should not be the servant of Christ. So all you troublemakers who follow your perverted religions, Catholic, Orthodox, Charismatic, Pentecostal, Baptist, all you followers of man, not of Christ. And God says, I should not be the servant of Christ. Your ship is sank. Soon as you little devils pervert the true light of the Lord, you go on. You shouldn't even op op uh, continue opening your perverted mouth about God and say anything. You out. I mean, that's what God says. And if you devils still continue perverting and following your false religions, well, you're not doing the will of God. You are rebels. I mean, well, now you've got little understanding about who the troublemakers are and uh, who I'm dealing with. I began to love the Lord Jesus. Now, since I began to love the Lord, I will tell my friend, have you no fear of God? How dare you talk to this holy man in such inappropriate way? How dare That's right. How dare you? How dare you, Orthodox troublemaker, talk about the Lord Jesus Christ in an app appropriate way. How dare you to lie about God? Huh? See, these troublemakers, you come to, to the church or to any cathedral, they're pointing finger at you. God doesn't point finger at you. That's the truth.
troublemakers do because they're lost. They've got no idea what they're talking about. God is pointing finger at them. These poets, they're the ones who are pointing finger at themselves. But here he's pointing, instead of finger at himself, he's pointing finger at you. That's how they deceive, deceive themselves and deceive others. Second Timothy 13, 3, but evil men and seducers shall wax worth and worth, deceiving and being deceived. So this another troublemaker is deceived and he is deceiving you. to be changed and your mouth needs to be changed so you don't stop lying about God and wiping that cross in front of you which is great grieving image God says in Leviticus don't make gra graven images so what are you doing here wiping cross to everyone. Your way of walking, your way of everything. Your way of walking and way of everything. What's this? What gospel is that? We walk by faith and not by sight. What are you talking about? You troublemaker? What are you telling me here how to walk? Are you explaining yourself clearly or what are you talking about? Jesus Christ changes the way we walk. You can't even walk the way Jesus Christ is telling you to walk. So what are you telling me how to walk? He will change me, turn to crucified Messiah. How did it change you? I never met any Catholic or Orthodox and see any changes in them. So what changes are you talking about? All the foul language, he will turn it into praise. Foul language? You're the one who's got foul language by lying and perverting the true wife of the Lord. Watch your mouth. What do you mean foul language? Everybody who sits in the congregation there, nobody talks. You're the only one who's talking here. And you are showing your foul language by not telling the truth to us. See how uh, those devils, church little devils who stand in the pulpits and represent themselves like a holy God of man, They're so lost, he doesn't even know what he's talking about and doesn't explain himself. And that's what they all do. I went to this independent Baptist church for a year. 
Every service there is a confusion. He talks about it and doesn't even know what he's talking about. And he's telling us his confusion. And with this confusion, the lie. All of them crooks. Dark alleys turn into the light. You don't even can't see that light. You you in darkness. From top to the bottom. Jesus is known to change. Yeah, Jesus is known to change. Jesus said, renew your mind. That's how you change. Renew your mind through the gospel of Christ. Open the Holy Bible and renew your mind, you troublemaker, orthodox crook. Christian, you're already forgiven. Fear of the Lord. Don't you know what fear of the Lord is? Fear of the Lord. Let's open the Holy Bible and see what the fear of the Lord is. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. Excuse me for a minute. Verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. <laughs> Let us hear the conclusion. See, Orthodox trouble, Micah, this is the conclusion for you and all of us. Of the whole matter, the whole thing. This is the Holy Bible, the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. Are you Orthodox troublemaker? Fear God? You do? Do you keep His commandments? What's the first commandment? Love your God with all your heart. Do you love God with all your heart? Obviously don't. Obviously you don't. What's the second commandment? Love your neighbor. You know what that means? How you love your God, the way you love your neighbor. And you love your God with a perverted why, and now you transform, you give this perverted love which you love God to your neighbor in the church, to your congregation. Congregation, this is your neighbor. And you telling them liars because you are full with liars. So you already broke first commandment and you broke second commandment. And they are the greatest two commandments. And you broke them. What are the commandments? 
Did you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Did you confess this publicly? I'll speak, I speak to you Catholics and Orthodox. Have you done that? How come Catholic poet never gave me opportunity to do it? Mm -hmm. What about baptism? That's the commandment. Did you get baptized in water? Hi? Eh? Or you've been sprinkled as the Bible? That's not a commandment. There's no way in the Bible God telling us to be sprinkled as, as babies. No way. So do you, buy, do you buy those commandments or you don't? You know what the baptism is for? You're carrying that cross and waving here in front, in front of everybody. Cross, Chris, that's uh, in, in Russian, christening. So in Russian christening, that's what they do, they cross themselves. That's how they understood from Mark 16. Christen, christening yourself and ye shall be saved. Which is, which is perverted way of believing, going and christening yourself and you're thinking you're saved. Christening yourself, that's a water baptism. Not christening yourself all the time with your hand and carrying crosses and christening everybody else in the congregation. So you crooks not obeying any of the commandments of God. And if you've been baptized like the Lord Jesus Christ showed us perfect example at the age of 30 he went and got water baptism himself at the age of 30. As a grown-up man, he showed us the perfect, perfect example how to get baptized. And you know what the baptism represents? You know why we're getting baptized? We're getting baptized to tell to the Lord that we'll serve Him with a good conscience. That's what the baptism represents. Serving the Lord Jesus Christ with a good conscience. And you trouble Orthodox Micah don't serve God with a good conscience. Your conscience belongs to the Orthodox Church. And your conscience is to please Orthodox people and all the higher pipes which gave you this position in the church to open your mouth. God never gave you permission to open your mouth. Orthodox hierarchies gave you. So you're not following any of the commandments. Your commandment is by the Orthodox church is to lie to people. Keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Man singular, not plural. Not like, for this is the whole duty of whole man. Whole man got nothing to do with this verse. The man is singular and the man like you and me. See, I'm, I'm a singular here. I'm here sitting, preaching, and telling you what God says. And I'm keeping His commandments. Verse 14, For God shall bring every work unto judgment. See, trouble, Micah, now I'm bringing your work unto judgment before fellow man. And God once you die, you look old. You don't have much 
Tigai, obviously. So I, your dice are numbered. So I be ready. Because you'll meet the Lord Jesus Christ sooner than you think. And you'll be on a day of, day of judgment before the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring every work unto that judgment with every secret thing. Well, I'm now revealing all the secret things which you hear telling to the congregation by lying to them. And all this will be open before the Lord Jesus Christ once you'll stand on the judgment day. Secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Whether it be good, that's the truth of God. This is the truth of gospel of Christ. Or whether it be evil. Evil, it's a lies about God. And you evil man deceiving congregation and lying about God. Amen. What else we know about fear of God? Acts ten twenty two. Allah. Acts. Some churches were calling me an apostle. And uh, it's good to be called an apostle. And I like to be called an apostle of Christ because I'm a defender of the truth, soldier of the truth. Acts 10.22